himself an opportunity to get back into the limelight. And for Francisco Verone, who's traveled the world, training in different gyms, going to Tijuana to learn how to fight and be in a war, he might have to go through one to stamp his ticket in the finals here tonight. And that's a fact. And, and Verone is doing what he does best, you know, and that's that jab. You know, he doesn't always fight tall, but when he does, it looks good. Very effective. So we, we all know that Brandon is going to have to get underneath that jab and get close to him in order to land his style of punches to close quarters. It says Verona is 5'10". He's probably like 5'11", maybe closer to 6 foot. And Brandon is probably an inch shorter than what, you know, the stats probably say. So this is going to be an interesting fight. Yeah, both men visually in fantastic shape here tonight, but to your point, very different body types as Verone looks for that left hook to the body. And power, as we know, it could be developed in, in very different ways and from very different bodies as well. The long, kind of whippy power of Francisco Verone or the short, stocky, compact power of Brandon Adams Thomas that we saw Hearns. in that first round. Thomas Hearns, Marvin Hag. Sure. Tito Trinidad, long and linky. Why you always got to bring him into the you conversation? No, bro. Always have to no, reference. Thomas Hearns, Marvin Hagler. Leave Tito out of this. So, you know, it's in, it's in Brandon's best interest, you know, to fight on the inside, obviously. Last fight against Villarreal, he was trying to jab, wasn't hitting the mark, but he worked his way inside, and that's how he got the stoppage. It's going to take him a, a minute or two to get close. To well, he already got a chance. little left hook in there. No leverage on it. And his blood already coming from Verona's nose. Might have been from a headbutt, I'm not sure. Either from the headbutt or from that left hook that <laughs> did connect. Yep. But Adams applying heavy pressure here in the opening round. And at least at the moment, Verone not finding a lot of space to operate. We'll see if he can get used to this pace that Adams is setting. Small Oops. ring plus what he did just now, um, Adams, has parried the jab. And then he worked his way inside. Parry countered with a right hand. And as I said earlier in the night, Marone doesn't always fight tall, but Brandon is making it even more difficult for him to fight tall because he's in his face. And he didn't uh, cut the ring off really well so far. Absolutely. Not landing shots yet. Big shots. The first line of defense is your legs. There you go. That's how you do it, Marone. The first line of defense is your legs. Use your legs for defense. Use your legs for distance and then need to fight long. See, he's not moving back far enough. He's, he wants to load up with his right, so he's not trying to move back too far. That's easy. Nice he's 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 right hand there from Verone. He tries to flurry behind it. Interesting opening round here in our second semifinal contest. Yeah. I think we're going to see Adams go to the body a little bit more. I think that's what he's, he's going to go you can be there. The only thing I'm worried about is him looping over. I would say for him in the uppercut. He's also did a little more in that first to, uh, round. Uh, uh, work to off the that round. But he's uh, not sure about that. I'm not too sure gonna about that. He's going to get there. I already I mean, seen I, I seen him there. Several jabs. I'm thinking the first 20, 30 seconds. I'm the first 20, 30 seconds. And then I seen Adams on him, countering him. Yeah, but he didn't land any big shots. And you can suck in behind the jab, but not yet. Don't tell on yourself. He's trying to get him, we'll get him. That's what I saw. Beautiful work. Put your contacts in. Uh, 2020. Yeah. Round two underway. Brandon Adams and Francisco Verone fighting to decide who will face Andreas Katsarakis in our tournament final a little bit later on this year. Thank you. A couple of, I got a couple of things that, that Adams started the round with were pretty good. I think that's what's going to have Verone commit to some shots. Yeah. And I also see when they tie up. Adams is trying to show him who's the stronger guy. Like right now, pushing him against the ropes, you know, with his big legs. He's trying to get out, but he's just showing him I'm the stronger guy. 
We saw the hard left hook to the body there from Adams a moment ago. And Barone's camp was very explicit about wanting to take that shot away. They wouldn't go so far as to say they're worried about that shot, but they know that that's the money shot for Adams and that a big part of their game plan needs to be dedicated to taking it away. Right. Uh, I, I totally... Go ahead, Doc. Yeah, no, I, I'm just saying, Brandon is going to have to put some punches together and not only stalk with the legs. Like, you have to start landing some shots and more than one left hook to the body. He's looking for that shot. I mean, obviously, he's a, he's a powerful puncher. Got a moving target in front of you. Yeah, and, and a guy throwing punches as well. Yeah, and I think his defense is subtle, too. I don't, I don't think Barone... Oh, that, that hook landed right there. Barone hasn't really been landing flush shots this round, except to jab to the body. Adam said the key for him tonight will be to diversify his offense, but you're right, that's a nice uppercut from Verone a moment ago. And that will be available because Adams, no matter how much he diversifies his offense, a key to it is going to be getting low and waiting his way to the inside. So there right. will be opportunities for uppercuts if Verone can find the space to throw them. Absolutely. He's going to tuck his chin into his chest and work his way inside. And that uppercut will be there. And that power jab from Adams landed flush on the chin of Verone. Yeah, the jab got there before the uppercut of Verone could get there. It might, might have been what has Verone's nose leaking. In the first round. So now Barone is trying to jab, jab upstairs, jab downstairs, and also he's trying to check hook him when he comes in. Like that. Zap to the body, but he kind of lost his footage. And, and right there, what Adams did was he, it's, it's, to counter the check hook, he stepped to the right with his right foot, and he cut him off. Nice uppercut again there from Verone, and that one just whistles past the face of a Brandon Adams. You can see one thing Verone is doing. As he's turning those corners, he's staying low. He doesn't want to get too high when he's turning that corner and get caught with a, one of those leaping left hooks up top from Adams that you saw him look for right there. That's a good point. And in, in, in that way, also, you're not pulling out with your chin in the air. I have seen good for both of them. I think we're, we're getting into a fight that's going to be like the last one, hard to score because yeah. it depends on Not what for you're you, looking for. Because you're scoring it for Verone already. No, I, I haven't, I haven't <laughs> said who's winning the fight at all. I'm telling you moments that I'm seeing that he's doing well. I think I know who the uh, Verone yeah. family is scoring I, I, this for. Uh, that, who's that in the back with a mask on? A watch party continues in the hometown of Francisco Verone. And I'm sure there's a whole lot more people watching in his hometown. Brandon complaining to the ref, you know, about watching, about pushing his head down. So round three begins. We saw the father of Francisco Verone in his corner, and the two of them, as we alluded to during Verone's ring walk, nice uppercut from Verone, they've kind of gone on an international boxing journey, taking Francisco to different gyms, and we mentioned him sparring extensively in Tijuana, sparring extensively with Virgil Ortiz, with Raul Curiel, and this is just in between fights. When Verone hasn't been busy, he's been going to high caliber gyms in high caliber camps to help learn on the job. That's how you develop a, a hell of a fighter, giving him all different type of looks and styles. Right, I mean, the guy has sparred with Marcos Maidana, you know. Obviously, he got some something in his, in his tank. Yeah, Maidana also an early mentor and briefly a promoter of Verone early in his career as he came out of the Olympics. Brandon Adams talked about sparring. I mean, all those years when he just wasn't getting fights, how do you think this guy made a living? <laughs> sparring everyone. That's right. Uh, two times in his career, he took a three-year layoff. Huge left hook from Brandon Adams, and Verone wisely grabs a hold. Might be hurt. That, that shook him. That shook him. I don't know if he's hurt, but that shook him. He felt that shot. Verone trying to smother Adams. Adams trying to break free and capitalize on this. This could be a big Left hook in Puerto Rico against Bohacek. 
Yes. Very similar. Just has to be careful of Verone's uppercut. Yeah, because Verone was doing very good at the beginning of this round. We talked about the dangers of Verone getting high along the ropes, and he got caught with the left hook that Adams is looking for. Back to the jab, back to the stick, Verone. Staying tall, staying long. Oh, good three points by the observation. Here it comes. Good reply from Verone there. But you see, like I was saying earlier, Barack, that one shot obviously is not going to be enough. You have to put some punches together. Obviously, Verone was able to eat that. This round, I agree with you. You know, I feel like, yes, that shot was the biggest shot of the round, but then he just probably hit him with six shots. And that's Verone I'm talking about. <laughs> Brandon Adams clearly believes in his power, and part of being a pressure fighter and a power puncher is sometimes having that conceit that, hey, maybe two, three rounds are just looking for openings, just making my opponent a little bit uncomfortable. It worked against Ismail Villarreal, and it worked early. Can he do the same here tonight? Yeah, and I don't even think he considers himself a power puncher. I do think he, he, he can box, and he feels like he's also a pressure fighter. But he, he's trying to put his combinations together at times, but you got to move the target because Verone is fighting a smart fight. See? Lateral movement. He tried to do the uppercut, which is a dangerous punch, and he got caught with that left hook. And that's that hook that shook him. Trying to shoot the uppercut, boom. He took it well. That was a hard shot. You know, relying right. on your power could be a slippery slope, though, as rounds move forward. If you're not landing that big shot. But after that sequence, Verone landed a nice couple of combinations. Brandon Adams is just showing off his conditioning. Standing up early. Round four underway. The semifinal matchup between Brandon Adams and Francisco Verone. The 34 year old Brandon Adams taking part in the fourth tournament of his career. He was a finalist in the ESPN Boxino tournament, a finalist again in the second Boxino tournament. And then in 2018, he won season five of the contender, defeating Shane Mosley Jr. in the finals. Another one of those wins, sneaky victories on the resume of Brandon Adams. And that was literally after a three-year layoff. Home in the gym, and, you know, being a sparring partner. After a three-year layoff, you move up. Nice right hand by Adams, and that one might have to run wobbled. Oh, that wobbled. Yeah, that he's on shaky legs. But he's smart to hold. So Verone trying to fire back to the body. Verone's not going to shy away from the war, but the power of Brandon Adams clearly having an impact. And yeah, Verone just trying to push Adams down, maybe buy some time as he gets belted with another overhand right. And this is what he's been complaining about, holding his neck down. Yep. You know, Verone is holding Adams' neck down. And Adams landed two heavy overhand right hands. We go back to what Adams was talking about in terms of diversity of offense. In the rounds where he's landed something significant that might have hurt Verone a little bit, it's been entirely different shots. A left hook to the body, that big left hook last round, now overhand rights. Verone doesn't necessarily know what he's looking for in terms of the power shots of Adams at the moment. But that's the thing, when you're training for one punch, he's saying, okay, I'm gonna stay away from that left hook. That's when you switch it up on it, and that's how the right hand snuck in there. When you focus on that other punch. You're listening to the corner of Francisco Verón. Perhaps some nervous moments over there. If you hear the female voice, which is louder than the corner of Adams, that's the way she shoots. The globe liking what Brandon Adams is delivering right now. Less than 30 seconds remaining. 
happening in round four, the biggest round of the fight for Brandon Adams. Verone sneaks in an uppercut there. But this is an Adams round. Two big right hands wobbling Verone in round four. Brandon Adams has completely turned this into his type of fight. Verone has not been able to use his size at all. side of the face of Francisco Verón, who's looking very uncomfortable right now. That right hand right there shook him, but, but a smart fighter he held on. I mean, it was flush on the button. I don't even know how he stood up. And like I said, when you're looking for the left hand, in creeps the right hand. Boom. And that might have been the second shot of the fight, which wasn't as deadly, but it was still right on the button. And there was another one as well in this round. So this definitely was a great round for Brandon Whose Adams. And Brandon even in the Adams, midst of that, Adams party. Who's in charge? was Who's landing a couple right, of shots there here and there. You're not supposed to be in here. You're not Nothing significant. That's your child, all right? Oh, all of a sudden, huh? <laughs> Basing it on the round, I just watched. Yes, sir. I do think I'm Brandon Adams is slowly taking control of this fight. He's feeling himself now. When he starts dancing, oh, that means something. Round five underway. The confidence just oozing out of Brandon Adams right now as he lets go the same right hand that was connecting time and time again in round four and lands once more. That's the money punch. I've seen Floyd do it a million times. If it works, I'm going to keep doing it. He will beat you with the same punch for 12 rounds, Floyd. Good body attack. Verona's smarter, to, you know, to get away in those exchanges as well. He's not, he's not allowing Adams to work as much as he want to. Adams is just good at, at, at smothering him and actually stopping some of his movement, cutting him off, grabbing him. Adams truly believes that he is one of the best 154 pounders in the world. He just hasn't been given the right opportunities. So now he has to kick in the door here in this OTX tournament. And he is grooving right now in the fifth round. This is what experience breeds, this kind of confidence. We always talk about experience being a factor. We're seeing it manifest in real time right now with Brandon Adams. Oh, that's, exactly, that's exactly what's happening right here. Uh, I just don't want him to fall in love with the right hand and forget about the other shots that are opening now because he's leery of that right hand. Not only that, also, Verona still peppering away at that jab and, and, and scoring with the jab as Brandon was waiting to land that big shot. And that was a very good right hand by Verona on the inside like that. I think Verona is still making this a very competitive fight. He's showing, he's showing a lot to me. There's that right hand from Adams again a moment ago. Verona certainly landing some sneaky shots, but he's getting blasted with even bigger right hands from Adams. Adams put a couple of punches together after that. That is some channel on the line. And now, now Adam's giving him a little bit of taste of his own medicine. You know, pushing his head down, putting, throwing his body weight on. Yeah. Good right hand, for the going overhand right. The one shot hasn't been able to do it yet with Brandon, so I guess a follow up after landing a big right hand, coming back with a left hook, helping cut. Couple punches together because Rowan has been able to take those shots well. Yep. And, and this is the thing the right hand is landing because Rowan is choosing to fight low. Yep. He, he's choosing to bend his knees and fight low. And what he's doing is he's throwing a one two and then dipping down and coming up, and that's when he's open for the shot. And credit to Adams for, for not giving him space to work, to, to use the jab, to use his length and the size. And yeah, he's fighting, he's fighting. Adams is fighting a very, very good fight. Smart pressure. Effective pressure. So the jab is there. He's just fighting low, like I said. Susceptible to the shots. And he snuck, and Adam snuck a left uppercut in there. 
still looking for the right hand. Boom, that right hand landed, but it ran into the forehead. Yeah. That one missed, landed on the shoulder. <laughs> I see good from both. I, obviously, it was probably a, I said obviously and probably brand new round. Take a look at his own YouTube poll. Very, very close yeah. in terms of what our viewers are seeing right now. Brandon Adams with a 2% edge in the voting right now. Despite the fact that Adams has fairly visibly buzzed Verone a couple of times in this fight. Yes, that's a lot of Argentinian. Votes right there, probably. I don't know. Argentine. I think the Verone watch party has some like AI bots <laughs> that are uh, that are voting here tonight. I saw the guy in the mask. I don't know. He looked he looked like he's very technical. It's round six underway. Brandon Adams right back to the inside. As Verone looks for some space to work, and it's at that long range that you'd have to think he can get some work done. Yeah, but the problem is he's he does it, he plants himself, he shoots the jab, he doesn't move his feet enough. You know, so if you shoot the jab and don't move your feet, you're not long distance anymore. That's They're what you gotta right. do. What you're doing right now, shoot the jab and then move like he was doing earlier. And Ock, I think this was exactly the game plan you laid out for Verone in an ideal sense off the top. Yeah. Letting the jab go and move your legs. Spin out of him, not let him set to land those big left hooks. Can't let him set. But Brandon is quick on his feet as well, so he's been able to get to position and land big shots. And that's the thing with, with Verone. He's also, in his mind, a power puncher. So he doesn't want to move back. He wants to plant that right leg and let that right hand go. How, how are the judges scoring this fight? When Adam lands a big right hand and then Verone lands two or three or four jabs, not easy fight to score either. No, well, I think the, maybe earlier, but the last couple of rounds, maybe uh, Brandon was uh, landing a little bit more. As we mentioned, the dimensions of the ring here at Overtime Boxing can make I like to see the nice shot there from, uh, from Adams. But they can make movers work a lot harder than they would otherwise, guys. Right. I like we to see Katsaraka sitting ringside, taking in the action. We'll see who he faces in the finals. But going back to the dimensions of the ring, you know, if you're a mover, if you're trying to fight like Verone is right now, there aren't those extra few steps where you could kind of take a breather. You're either planting your feet and trying to exchange, or your back is on the ropes and you're in the danger zone. You've got to do something. There, there's always, it's a nonstop active moment if you're a fighter fighting backing up like Verone in this ring. I mean, well, one of the best fighters in the world in Lomachenko has been able to master even doing that in a small ring. That's by spinning. You have to spin quick before your, your, your back gets to the ropes. And, and that's the thing, when you're spinning, you're not exerting a whole bunch of energy. You're not moving that much. You gotta turn it so tight. Good one, two by the road there landing on Adams. Well, Adams like a left hand. But you're right, Corey, he, he's, getting, he's letting his back get to the ropes. He has to turn Adams before they get to that point. Yeah, bro, doing some good work in this round. He just has to work really hard to do it. As Adams digs that left hook to the body, and Verón felt that one right before the bell. That absolutely hurt him. Perfectly placed body shot by Adams. Yeah, good body shot. This is a competitive fight. And it's kind of like what Katsarakis was saying he wanted. He said either Brandon going in and blow him out or something like this. But that was that last, <laughs> that was the last punch of the, of the, of round. the round. And it really hurt him. He tried to grab right there. And this was the, this was the work in the beginning. Little counter. Let's send it over to Overtime Tom, who's standing by with Andreas Katsarakis. Hey, thank you, fellas. Yes, I am down here with Katz. You've had a little bit of time now to kind of soak in the victory. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling amazing. That was a great fight, and I'm just enjoying this one right now. Hey, you just came out here. You watched a little bit in the locker room. It sounded like, what are you going to look at when, when going between these two fighters? Tell me again, excuse me. What, what are you going to be looking bet uh, at between these two? So, at the beginning, I saw Verón working a lot along, around the ring and doing a good job bre breaking Adams down. Hey, the opposite boxing Adams, but Adams already broke him down and he's overpowering. And I think the knockout is coming, the knockout is cooking. 
Who you got winning this one? You got to pick one. Anyone, anyone. I prefer Adams because of his resume, but anyone will do. All right, there we go. Congrats again. Appreciate you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Tom. Hard shot over the top there from Adams a moment ago, and I think we're hearing Clarissa Shields' coaching <laughs> yes. more than we were hearing Katz there. Absolutely. She's definitely, definitely coaching him, saying that the hook to the body is the shot. He's saying that he's weak down there. Have we got any copy box update? I would love to see what, what these punch stats are saying. That's a good question. And that's the thing, when you're, when you're a puncher like Brandon Adams that's switching it up, going to the body at first, going to the left hook, right hand over. Oh, 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 oh. right hand from Brandon Adams and Verone. Has to be more than a the ring pedigree of Pavone right now. What does he have? See Clarissa Shields in the bottom right hand of your screen. It's the right hand of Brandon Adams that's doing the damage here tonight. And just landing a left foot there. Has landed the big shots tonight in this fight. Pavone is smartly tying his, his opponent up. And back to the jab. Oh, just on. grabbing a hold there. As Adams takes downstairs to the body, trying to break free. Less than a minute left to go here in round seven. Brandon Adams, he's not throwing a ton. It's a lot of pressure. It's foot pressure. It's physical pressure. But what he is throwing is usually landing what he's throwing is usually big stuff. Yeah, very hard shots with bad intentions. And Verone, looking in bad shape at the moment. That Brandon Adams so all over him here in the seventh round. That body shot really hurt him. That's why Verone is bending up. That puts him up there. Throws him up there. Just feeling those nothing. body shots. That's a nothing. You cannot sit in the ropes. Well, Verone insisting that perhaps he slipped and had to sit down on the ropes, but that will be counted as a knockdown nonetheless. That body shot put him down, and he hit him when he was sitting on the ropes, and he felt that body shot, and that was a right hand. Verone is looking ragged right now. He's been tying Adams up pretty well throughout this match. the jab. Can't always go with the overhand right without the jab like he was doing earlier, but he set it up with the jab. Boom. Flush. Hurt him, and Verone grab. So that's just the same shot. It's been the money shot of this fight. <laughs> it's such a money shot, we got to show it four times. <laughs> Beautiful play shot. But uh, this round also was, was the body shot. It was the round of the body okay. shot. And, and look, you, you asked for it, Ock. You asked for it, All right, so we got Adams at 27.3%. Same amount of punches landed. But, you know, all, all numbers are not created equal, I guess, because the harder shots are obviously coming from Brandon, even though it's equal amount. Yeah, I think about 20 of those might be hard right hands that snap the head back of Francisco Verone. We'll see how Verone looks in the early stages of this round because the body language was anything but positive at the end of round seven. And you know what that's also showing me? That it's possible that Adams is winning this fight because Verone had the higher punch stats already. You know, so he caught up landing more shots. Verón complaining about a right hand on the on the hip there from Brandon Adams. That's not the right hand that he needs to worry about right now. It's the one that's been hurting him like that one that just came right over the top again. Damn, Verón is a warrior because he took that hit. He threw, he threw a one-two just like that. No, and that one-two just landed. And he's fighting another right hand now. in the middle of the ring. Yeah, Verón, he's a warrior. Oh, Adam 
Williams is switched south for him and cutting off the ring. Doing whatever he can to get Verone on the ropes. I want to see what punch he's trying to set him up with in the southpaw stance. What is he looking for? Is it a left? Oh, I was about to say if, it's, if it was an overhand left. Well, Brendan Adams, in my understanding, is a natural uh, southpaw, left-handed. And one of many fighters who learn to fight as an orthodox fighter so that they can really crank that left hook, their power shot. Yep. Miguel Cotto, another example of that. Oscar De La Hoya learned the same way. Mm -hmm. Skills. That's just experience because he actually weaved a, shot, a, a left jab to the end of the shot. Good combination here for Adams. He's really letting his hands go, getting full leverage on those hooks. As sweat drips on our paperwork here, good barrage of punches by Adams there. Oh, another right hand, and these are just tight. Chin on Verone. In that moment in the, in the corner was the first time he was able to let go all of those shots at once. Yep. Guys, these are right hands that would take out most 154 pounders in the world. Absolutely. And Verone is absorbing them, and another one reigns in. Wow. Final 10 seconds of round eight. Brandon Adams continues to bust up Francisco Verone. Brandon Adams is super conditioned because that wrestling that they're doing, it, it takes a lot out of you to wrestle your, your opponent, to push him up against the ropes. And he, and he doesn't even seem tired. This was a, another great round. And this, this combination right here was the first time he was able to actually unload big shots all at once in the corner. And he set it up with that. He, like I said, he weaves the jab and comes over the top with the right hand. And then he tried to do a shot to the body, but he pushed his head down and Adams, it made him stray low. So here it is again, boom, weave the jab, come over the top. That's gonna be the story of this fight so far. We're looking over at the body language of Francisco Verone in his corner. He slumped down onto his stool. And prior to sitting down, referee Ansel Stewart went over to him and asked him, hey, are you okay? So we're at that point in the fight wow. where the official is noticing that body language as well, guys. Right. But if you look at it, <laughs> it's deceiving because now he's on the front foot and he's pushing Adams back. Or is this something that Adams is doing? to land that shot right there. <laughs> and again, one Drawing knockdown scored from Brandon Adams. Ironically, not, not even one of the 20 biggest shots that Adams has landed in this fight scored that knockdown. This literally could have been the main event. <laughs> I thought it was going to be Casarakis and Terry, even though it probably was as well. Nice body shot there for Brandon Adams. shots thrown by Brandon Adams wanting to end this fight in this round. You know, one time Jimmy Lennon Jr. when he was introducing oh, nice chokehold. <laughs> nice chokehold by the one. one time Jimmy Lennon Jr. was introducing Adams and he called him, instead of cannon, the hammer. <laughs> and I think maybe he proved <laughs> He's proving him right in this fight. I mean, cannons are definitely more powerful than hammers. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Ooh, nice left hook there from Brandon Adams. The yeah, cannon is like long distance. It is, yeah. You know, it's a long distance shot. Man, he, those are hammers right there. Man, he's starting to wear with, with Verone down. Verone's been able to tie him up and, and, and clinch very important times. Ooh, as he, as he never lands another left hook, Brandon Adams. Ooh. 
the chin shot. Snapping the head back of Verone. And Verone, you see the swelling on the face. He's wearing this exhaustion. Good right hand by Verone here. Yeah. I mean, Adam shook it off, though. Don't get too comfortable here. I think Adam should put his hands up because Verone is not a sitting duck. Still a live dog, absolutely. Like Barone's heart. Yeah, he's really throwing punches. He could be moving and could just be tapping like we saw Terry do last round, but no, he's sitting down on his shots trying to hurt Adams. Well, he might not have a choice either at this point, guys. Yeah, I mean, know what our YouTube poll said, but there's another reality where this is a fight that's getting pretty wide on the scorecards, especially when you consider that knockdown. Yeah, he's down in this fight, so he's going to have to close. The end of this round in the next round, big and try something huge. And no doubt he will try. Yes, indeed. Heart of a lion. So I think this is when Adams was drawing him into the ropes so he can land a, a big shot. And he tried for the right hand. Good body check. And it was a good shot to the body. And he was really going after that, the, uh, the ribs of Verone in this round with that right hand. Let's take a look at the punch stats thus far. You see Brandon Adams outlanding Francisco Verone, 103 to 94. Verone no, 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 just slightly no, 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 outworking Adams, but again, it's about the quality, the heft of these shots that we're seeing from Brandon Adams. A good number of those. I would say 50% of them are power shots. Are potential <laughs> fight enders. That's, that's the difference, you know. Verone is landing some good shots on his own as well, but he's also landing jabs. Tenth and final round, and should we go to the scorecards? We'll see if this calculus pays off for Brandon Adams. If quality over quantity will pay off here tonight. Francisco Verone coming up firing here in the tenth round. He's fighting like someone who believes that he's down on the scorecards and needs something big in the final round. Oh, yeah. Nice. I was just about to say, I think Adams is trying to set him up for that right hand, and that's exactly what happened. He landed a couple of nice little flicker jabs. Good right hand by the Chopping guy. shots there. Chopping shots, excuse me, from a Francisco Verone, and he keeps bringing that right hand. And, and this is a good opportunity for Adams to, to try to end the shot with a big shot, because Verone is, is going to be offensive and, and, and take some risks now, because this is the last round for him to do anything big. Right. And Corey, you was right. He was chopping his chops. Thank you for saving me on that. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, I, you know. I can save you every once in a while. So I, I told you I need a C4 energy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you run out? <laughs> oh, oh. Shot there from the wrong. Yeah. Court, court Adams um, just thinking for a second, you know, just lost a little bit of focus. <laughs> Half a round left to go in this contest as Verone keeps firing that right hand. Oh. His left hook there from Brandon Adams seemed to throw Verone a little bit off balance and yet another chopping right hand from the cannon. A little over a minute left for Adams to try to close his show, but Verone is nice. Verone is landing good shots. They're just having no effect on Brandon Adams. Yeah, and, and, and again, I think the other battle that Verone is waging in terms of convincing the judges is again back to the body language. When Verone gets hit with something, it looks bad. It moves. Right? It, it moves him. He looks exhausted. He looks hurt, even though he's still in this fight and firing back and going punch for punch in terms of output yes. with Brandon Adams. The visuals of it are, are not in favor of Verone right now. This is one of his better rounds. Yes. You know, compared to the last three or four. It's going to take more than a good round to win this fight. Oh, looks like Adams is turning it up now. Trying to close the show. Verone is coming on strong in this round. Best round of the fight for Verone, but will it be enough? See Brandon Adams yelling at him right now as he rains down another right hand. Oh, wow. 
I think Adams got caught up in trying to set up that right hand so much, he let Barone win this round. Possibly. Whether he won or not, he just let him throw a lot of shots. No KO bonus. But it's the $100,000 grand prize that's more meaningful. <laughs> a lot of respect between these two men. 95 to 94. Judge Oliver, 98 to 91. And Judge Gilbert scores about 96 to 93. All in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. And now, the WBA Continental North America Super Welterweight Champion and joining Andreas Katsurakis in the OTX Super Welterweight Tournament Final. From the city of Watts, California, Brandon the Cannon Adam. So the Cannon launches into the tournament finals of Brandon Adams with a unanimous decision victory over Francisco Verone.